guys, welcome back. We're doing another video, and I know what you're saying to yourself, Hanson, not another more circle video. Yeah, kind of, okay? But we're going to focus today on this, absolute maximum shear stress. Not just any old shear stress. We're talking about absolute, what's the absolute maximum it could possibly be, okay? It's different than the shear stress we've been finding, or maybe it's not. Let's see if we can sort this out, okay? So what we've got to do is, we've got to know the difference between a couple things. Number one, the shear stress that we have here that's given on this stress element, we call this shear stress in-plane, okay? That's called in-plane shear stress, okay? Now, if I take a little piece of material, a little piece of whatever, metal or whatever it is, is it really a flat 2D thing? No, it's actually a 3D thing. And what it is, is what we call, we call this guy a volume element. Okay? So maybe a stress volume. This is just a plane. It's just a 2D thing. This is a 3D thing. So what we have here is 50 megapascals, okay? And then up here on this surface, 70 megapascals. And then of course you have these guys. There's the 20. running around the periphery, the perimeter, 20 megapascals, okay? And then in this direction here, which is coming out at you, and back there, guess what? You have zero megapascals, okay? So when we draw one of these, these stress elements in 2D, what this really means is it's not really 2D, it's really 3D, but that other face doesn't have any force on it, and so we can show it like this, okay? This is a volume element in 3D. So this is that guy. Same thing. I just redrew it again, okay? So, so is that, now, we know for more circle, is that max shear stress? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. So let's just draw more circle for this stress element, and let's see what that looks like, okay? So let's, it, it, it's good practice for us one more time, right? Practice makes perfect. On the X face, right, here's X and there's Y. Remember, more circle, first thing you do, make yourself a set of coordinates. On the X face, I have 50 megapascals. On the Y face, I have 70 megapascals. And remember, this is always sigma here, this is always tau over there. So tau on the X face is going up, right? So if it rotates me counterclockwise, that's positive, isn't it? So I'm going to put a 20 there. And on the Y face, it rotates me clockwise. That's negative. These two are always opposite each other. Okay, so there's my coordinate points. One more circle. Let's plot it. Okay. Okay, so here's my tau axis. Here's my sigma axis. Again, this is positive over here. This is negative, remember. This is tau down here. This is positive. Okay? All right, so here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so let's plot this. 50 and 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 50 and positive 20 is down, right? One, two, three, four, five. So right there is 50, 20. Okay. And then the other point is 70, 20. 50, 60, 70, 20. Right there. Isn't going to be a very big circle, is it? Not a very straight line either. Come on, Hanson. You can do better than that. All right, there you go. Okay, so if this guy over here is 70, negative 20, okay, let's see, can we draw a circle here? 
Not really. Oh, that's terrible. That's not, not the worst of all time, but it's not too bad. Okay. So the center of the circle, right? If this over here is 50, if that's 50, and this over here is 70, then the center of the circle must be at, that's pretty easy, 60. All right, if that's 60, then this over here is 20, this over here is 20. Let's see, the radius of the circle is equal to, what, this over here is 10? So 10 squared plus 20 squared, square root. How much is that? On clear 10 squared plus 20 squared equals square root. 22.36. Okay? And that's what we need. Now we can find sigma 1 and we can find sigma 2, can't we? Okay? The principal stresses. And what? Sigma 1 is going to be what? 60, the center of the circle, plus a radius. And then, because here's sigma 1 over here, okay? Over here, sigma 2. Okay, so 60 plus 22.36, and this one down here is 60 minus 22.36. Okay, so that's going to be, I can do this one, 82.36 megapascals, and what is that guy? 60 minus 22.36 equals 37.64. Okay. So now I know these two values here, 82.36, and this one over here is, um, what, 37.64. And guess what? Up here at the top of the circle, right, guess what tau max is equal to? A radius, isn't it? It's equal to 22.36, okay? So there, we found tau max. But we found tau max in plane. We found the tau max for that stress element. But is that absolute max? Hmm. Let's do this, okay? Let's draw us a stress element. Okay, here's a stress element. But let's draw it as a volume. Okay, and let's draw um, our principal stresses. Now, when I'm at principal stresses, how much shear stress do we have? Huh? What's the value of tau? When that's there, what's the value of tau? Zero, right? It's not up or down. It's on that line. It's zero. So what I have here at principal stress, I have something like this. 82.36, and then up here... I have, what, I have, uh, what's that guy? How big was sigma 2? 37.64. Okay, megapascals. Now again, right, here's the other side of that guy. Again, I have this. I'm going to draw that like that. This guy is zero, okay? So I have this 3D stress element, and now I know what my principal stresses are, what the maximum stress is, okay? Now, at principal stress, right, that's how I plotted my circle. I know those two principal stresses, right? Let's change our perspective. Instead of looking at it straight on, which is looking like straight at the zero there, right? Look like straight on. What happens if I looked at this, oh, I don't know, from this direction here? Here's my eyeball, and I'm looking at it from that direction, what stress element do I see? Well, if I look at, at that direction, I see a stress element that has on the X face, zero, and on the Y face, I see 37.64, right? Do you see that? Kind of have to think abstractly. You know, we were looking at the stress element straight on like this, now we're looking at it from this side over here of the cube, right? Okay, 
let's, let's, now there's no shear stress here. So these two guys here are principal stresses. Well, that would make a brand new Mohr circle, wouldn't it? It would be one, one point would be at zero, just like our coordinates over there. One point would be at zero, one point would be at 37.64. What would that look like? Well, it would look like this. Here's one point at zero. That's 37.64. So it would look like, like that, wouldn't it? Okay. Huh. What's the, what's the tau of that guy? Of that circle, what's tau here? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's 37.64 divided by 2, right? Because that's a radius, right? If that's the diameter, divided by 2. So the tau max right here, right? Tau max for that circle is 18.82 megapascals. So he has his own tau max, right? That one was 22. Hey, that one's bigger, so that one must be the absolute max. Well, hang on a second. What happens if now our eyeball, I'm going to erase this up here, okay? I'm going to erase this. What happens if our eyeball now is up here? Okay, there's your eyeball. Now you're looking at it from this direction. What do you see? Well, I see a stress element. I better not draw it there. Let me draw it over here. I see a stress element that has one side with zero on it, and the other side has, right, I see 82.36 megapascals, okay? Well, those are principal stresses. There's no shear stress. That would, that would make a circle, wouldn't it? One side is at zero, my coordinates, one side's at zero. The other side's at 82. Here's zero. Here's 82 over here. And so I wind up with this one more circle. One more, more circle. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. There's no extra cost for the bad jokes. Okay. This plane here. Wow. What is going to be? Whoop. I got to go all the way down to like there, right? To get the tail max. guess what? It's going to be bigger than all the rest, isn't it? When you're talking about absolute, which one is absolutely the max, that's the tau max. That's absolute tau max, okay? And how big is he? It's zero all the way out to 82.36. So a radius must be 82.36 divided by 2, 41.18. Okay, so that, is, that would be the absolute tau max for that stress element. Now, I can't find that until I find the principal stresses, right? And I draw all three views of my volume element, right? My volume element with principal stresses on. I got rid of shear stress, okay? When I draw all three views, then I can see where tau max is, okay? Now let's talk about this for one more second, okay? Is tau max ever on the in-plane stress element? The answer is yes, and here's when, okay? Um, let me draw this for you, okay? Imagine if, if, I had, if I had these things here, and that was negative and that was negative, okay? Then what would have happened? I would have the same circle, except I would have been completely on this side of the axis, right? And then I would have had another circle that touches the center, and then I would have had a third circle, okay? Right? So even if those were negative, I would have been on the other side, the absolute stress max would still not have been on that element. Now, what happens if, let me erase, let me erase, okay? You got all this? You got all this, okay, let me erase this.
Okay, what happens if I have a stress element and I have like one positive thing, but let's say that this guy was negative, right? He was in compression instead of tension, okay? Well, that might plot something like this, okay? So now my circle straddles the axis, okay? It's not completely on that side or it's not completely on this side. I straddle the axis, okay? When you go and do those other two views of this, that stress element, right? When you do the other two views, you're going to wind up with this. You're going to have one there, and you're going to have one there, okay? So here's the deal. If I have a stress element that more circles straddles this axis, then the absolute maximum shear stress, right, is going to be in plane. If it doesn't straddle that axis, if it's completely over there or it's completely over there, the ma absolute maximum shear stress is not going to be in, in plane. Okay? Are you with me? So really all we're doing is we took that volume element and we're just looking at it from different directions and constructing a more circle and then saying which one of those circles has the biggest radius, right? Because the one with the biggest radius, the radius is tau max. So we're trying to find tau max absolute. Which one of those circles has the biggest radius? Man, I hope that helps. I'll see you on the next video.